all start with Andrew Cox, retired master gunnery sergeant. Thelostart.podbean.com. Get some merchandise and help support the podcast in getting our veteran voices out for all to hear. Now on all major podcast platforms, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be a guest, tell your veteran story, discuss your veteran business or organization. Email the Lost Art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. Andrew Cox, a Till Valhalla Project Ambassador. See the project story at tillvalhallaproject.com. Thanks for tuning in. Please enjoy the podcast that's giving a voice to our veterans. The Lost Art with Andrew Cox. Today's episode is brought to you by TrumpShirt.com. TrumpShirt.com is a veteran-owned business where 100% of the proceeds goes to disabled veterans and veteran organizations. Support your veterans by purchasing a shirt at TrumpShirt.com. Use the promo code TLA and get free shipping. That's TrumpShirt.com, promo code TLA. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast, that podcast giving a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we're having a My Veteran Story with Linwood Keen. But before we get into that, are you enjoying the podcast? And go to the Lost Art website. That's the lostart.podbean.com. Go check it out. See what we got going on there. There is a merchandise tab. Click on that merchandise tab. We'll get you a hat, a shirt, something cool like that. And uh, help support us in getting our veteran voices out for all to hear. I also want to give a shout out to the Till Valhalla Project. Uh, there's a cool hat that they have, but uh, they do some incredible work in honoring our fallen heroes. Uh, so go to their website, tillvalhallaproject.com. Go check them out. See what they're all about. And if you can help support them, please do so. All right. With that, I got Linwood here. How you doing? Good. First, that's you did great just now, man. That whole segment without messing up, I'd have been like, hold on, let's do it again. <laughs> hold on. That's awesome, man. I, That's great. I've done one or two Dude, since, that was, since that I was started. Good. So I, not quite a year in, but uh, well, but I've, I've got that part down. That was fantastic. Man. Thank you. That I appreciate good. it. Appreciate it. All right. So uh, well, I guess let's just start at the beginning. Then. Okay. Let's go uh, where you grew up and then uh, kind of what drew you to military service. I grew up here in San Antonio, Texas. Um, my my father was at Army Airborne, and my um, my parents got divorced when I was eight. And uh, the biggest, meanest man I ever met in my life was my stepdad. Oh wow, yeah. he's like six, six two, six three, giant combat medic. Yeah. And, um, the the contrast between him and my father. I mean, my dad was an alcoholic, and he was a good man, but he had to problems mm -hmm. this man came in and kind of showed me integrity right hard work discipline and uh the trajectory of my life changed by meeting him you know he was a good master sergeant in the army he retired uh, he was training these guys over here at fort sam and at, at, at um Cambodia, it's just the combat medics and, right uh i grew up in san antonio i got in trouble i was living with my dad you know after they divorced i was living with my father for a while and Daddies don't care too much what you do out here. They, they, <laughs> my dad would come home wasted, drunk, and I'd have the house to myself or my sister and I would be there and I'd run amok. Yeah. No discipline. Um, my parents, when they got divorced, I met my stepdad. First, I hated him. Yeah. So I didn't want to live with him. I mm -hmm. lived with my father. And uh, I got myself into bad trouble. Yeah. And I had to move with my stepdad and my mom in Poteet, Texas. Okay. And they were... Um, that was rough because I had freedom. I do whatever I want, but under his roof, his military, yeah. his rules, he would freaking, everything was immaculate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't sneak out. He put toothpicks on the windows to make sure. <laughs> oh, wow. And he always had a way of finding out if we did something wrong. Um, one story was he grounded me and my sister, went to work, and it was a rodeo. Yeah. And my mom was pretty easy. She was like, well, y'all can go to the rodeo, but just, just come back before he gets off the of work. So um, we get home one day and uh, he's watching five o'clock news. Yeah. And guess who he sees walk across the screen at the rodeo? Oh no. <laughs> me and my sister. Yeah. Uh, he was a he was very hard on me up until I turned around 17. I got saved. Okay. I gave my heart to Jesus. Very nice. And um changed my, my life. That was the big change in my life too. And that kind of brought us in a he realized I was trying to get my life together mm -hmm. and I, I showed interest in the Marine Corps. Okay. And uh, I don't, 
my first exposure to a Marine was when I was probably eight or nine years old. My neighbor was, his father was a Marine and he had okay. a dress blues hanging oh, on nice. the fireplace with his American flag. Yeah. So it always stuck with me. And uh, I told my pop, I said, I, I want to be a Marine. And um, he didn't like that too much. Oh, you know, <laughs> those, those, he is army, right? Yeah, well, so that that and also, uh, I, I was I'm not a combat veteran. Yeah, but uh, a lot of combat veterans will tell you, you know, he he, he didn't like the idea of me going to war. Yeah. Know, so he he went in his closet and he pulled out these photo albums of all the photos of the the trauma from Vietnam. Oh wow! Yeah. Grenade blast and patients that he worked on, mm-hmm. and he was just letting me see it. And he was like, "This is what you want." This is what you want to do, and I, I was set on it. I was like, I want to be a Marine. I want to fight for my country. I, I had grandiose ideas of what it was to be a yeah. Marine. You know, yeah. I just I had to do it. And um, again, uh, I went off and joined the Marines at seventeen. And I didn't. I was delayed. You ever heard of the delayed program? Delayed entry. Yeah, delayed yeah. entry. So I, I just waited that year and um, took off the boot camp. Nice. So okay. What well, you? Uh, July thirteenth, nineteen ninety two. Okay, ninety two. Yeah. All right, and then uh, what? What were you joining uh, to do? What was your uh, job? In? You know, when I, my understanding of the Marines was, we're all gonna. I, I didn't understand the MOS stuff. Yeah, I just knew I wanted to be a Marine. So when I joined, my recruiter told me so I had done drugs. Yeah, but, you know, I dabbled in drugs a little bit. He says, "Don't tell them you did drugs." Right. And I was like. So in boot camp, they had the moment of truth. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and they broke me. Oh, no. They broke me. I was scared. They're like, we're yeah. going to pull your hair out. We'll go back like 10 years and we'll find out every drug you... So I was like, I did. I, I did some drugs. And uh, I, I don't know what that did, but it, 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 it launched me into, I guess, an MOS that was for druggies. <laughs> or guys that probably experimented with drugs. Uh, that was around a lot of chemicals. So I was able to... Um, I got into uh, defensive mapping. Oh, okay. Are you familiar with defensive mapping? Not really, no. So back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, they used maps. Yeah. And basically, they taught me how to make maps and how to uh, lay them out and go through the whole media process of creating right. not just maps, but anything, you know, SOPs. I worked in a dark room building film. On a big oh, camera. wow. So it, was, it was cool, but um, I was proud of it. Yeah, you know, that was a Marine. Yeah, that's all yeah, I wanted. Yeah. That's, all, that's all I wanted to do was be a Marine. So, um, I just I went to boot camp, got married right after boot camp. Oh wow! Okay, in high school, my high school sweetheart got married right after boot camp. I think maybe every Marine does this, or every guy that goes yeah. off to with, with their high school sweetheart. I, I came back, got married. I got. I mean, I was in boot camp, graduated, came here and got married. So you was like on boot leave. Camp. Yeah. But the first red flag was she didn't go to my boot camp graduation. I should have uh, caught that. <laughs> I should have caught that. But um, I got married and then I went to um, Marine combat training. Then I got sent to uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Okay. In D.C. for a year. So it was a one year. It was two schools for one year. Mm-hmm. And um, I well, loved it. Before we get into that, yeah. let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Okay. So uh, – Joining the Marine Corps, you go off to boot camp. So talk to me a little bit about your boot camp experience oh. <laughs> and and the good, the bad, whatever it is you want to talk boot about. Boot camp was, I felt like it was a dream. Yeah. When I when I got there, it, I remember just staying up for, for two days straight, no sleep, getting yelled at, and you just had to. I feel like Forrest Gump. Like I fit, <laughs> I fit right in, man. I, I just like fit right in, but um. Because of my religious beliefs, they made me a scribe. Yeah. So I was a Protestant scribe. That got me into trouble because I, I'm very, uh, I'm very confident and very outspoken about my faith. Yeah. And um, so boot camp was just one of those things where when they made me a scribe, I guess that you have to have a certain amount of time. To get, you have to pray or give the religious guys their time during the night. Right. Yeah. And I would pray, bro. I would pray in my drill shirt and walk around my rack. Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> and they were just like, get on me. But um, that was just part of my life. Yeah. And um, I, I, li- I loved it. I loved it. The boot camp was awesome. 
I mean, I'm sure you hear all the funny stories of oh, yeah. just imitating drill instructors. Yeah, yeah. And drill instructors walking in and catching them and then just getting killed. And, <laughs> you know, it was it was just a I think everyone can tell you it's probably the worst, best part of their lives. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing the friendship you, you have. We had some guys get kicked out in boot camp because um they're putting uh uh the the freaking oil to clean our weapons. Mm-hmm. I forgot what you called it. C, uh, CRC, CLP. Yeah, CLP. They put CLP oil in some recruits' canteen. And I don't know how the drill instructors found out. Whoa. But I remember being online one morning and they called two guys up and they called the other recruit and had him get his canteen. He poured it out. CLP. And then they kicked those two dudes out. Wow. There was just no idea why them would do that. but And that's just one of my memories of, of that. That is crazy. But one of my favorite memories is being out in the field and um, I fire watch mm-hmm. and we're out where I uh, camp Hill and soon, yeah. I was second phase recruit training and I felt like I felt God tell tell everyone in the platoon that Jesus knows. <laughs> so that was probably three in the morning at fire watch and I wrote I wrote on fifty sheets of paper. <laughs> 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 and, I did it. and during the night, I went to every hooch and I put it in every hooch, even my drill instructor's hooch. Oh, wow. And then I kept my fire watch going the next morning. Get over here. I ran over there. <laughs> he just killed me. He killed me. I still got this. He was making me do push ups on my knuckles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run, drop, run, drop on the rocks. I still got the, the scars. Oh, my gosh. And I was bleeding and I was running and I was. Blood's come in my knuckles, and there was a freaking Navy corpsman sitting there smiling at me, <laughs> like you're stupid. And um, but I, I don't know. The drill started respecting me for some reason after that. They yeah. gave me the hardest time, and ended up being like, it "Was cool, yeah." And went through and finished. It was great. Well, that, it sounds like a fun experience. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was hard, but it was good. Yeah, yeah. Rewarding. So, was, uh. Leaving boot camp, uh, and you know, you came home, got married, yeah, uh, married. and then you go back for uh, combat, combat training. training. How was that for you? It was a pretty well, I was here, it was, it was, it was good. So, I came back home, got married, and on my on my flight back to Camp Pendleton, I was in my, my service alphas, the green, the green mm-hmm. uniform, and I was wearing my my rifle badge, right? My little national defense medal or ribbon. And I was had my sea bag, and I still had the mentality of the recruit. You're still kind of scared of everything. You're right, still, yeah. you're a Marine, but you're still, you see a PFC, you're kind of like, and I, I was carrying my sea bag in the airport. It knocked my freaking rifle badge, took the little pin off. Oh, no, it yeah. Broke it, and it was dangling. And I, I, I got to Camp Pillow with a dangling and freaking rifle badge, and I was so scared. I went to, uh, we went to check in. I ran to the store and bought a new badge. But then I realized that the MCT, you weren't recruiting. You still got yelled yeah. at and treated kind of like crap. But there was no one over your shoulder yelling at you, screaming right. about you. Yeah. Can, so that was cool. That was fun. Um, the a good memory of MCT was we did um, we were out in the field for a couple of weeks and we did like a fourteen mile hike. And I got back to the inches and I was so hungry. Yeah, and I was so thirsty. And there's this dude walking around with Domino's pizza, real personal pizza. He's yeah, yeah. delivery guy. And I, I asked for one, and I got the Domino's and Coke, and I've been chasing that feeling ever since. <laughs> the feeling of that pizza and the Coke and how good it tastes after being out in the field for two weeks and coming home off of the hump, and that's the best food I, I can't eat. I can't. I always want to. Yeah. I want to experience that again. I'm always looking for that. That feeling you know <laughs> yeah it's a, it's got to be good you know yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's hard to talk yeah it sure. is it yeah. is those experiences are you can't <laughs> you can't talk over them. Uh, it's funny all right so after mct you're off to your school in uh fort belvoir belvoir okay and now you were there for a year yeah was, so did your uh wife go with you i know oh, i got there in uh like november and so I checked in and I I I, I just talked to my, my team sergeant and I talked to the, the general sergeant in charge and 
they they said since I was there a year, the agency had a problem bringing her. So you know, I came back home and we drove up there, and it's it's weird for a married young couple, you know, mm-hmm. especially when um, especially the wife. You know, oh yeah, for, for me, I was busy. I was training, and I was trying to build a career. You know, my my whole dream was I wanted to be a career Marine. That yeah. was my dream. I wanted to stay in and uh, and retire. And so when you're out there on the grind and when you have a teenage wife who doesn't yeah. know anything and she's out there, um, I, I, I look at it a little differently than I had before because I have a little more empathy. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I've been married three times. So okay. I look, at, I look <laughs> yeah. at my first wife and think, okay, she was a kid. I, I understand that. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you're busy doing your thing. Well, then yeah. Jody's going to come around. Yeah. And, and that kind of happened. But being out in Belvoir was... Um, are you Marine? Air Marine. Force, Marine? Yeah. So you ever been on an Army base or a oh, yeah. base? Yeah, yeah. So being uh, at our MOS training, defense mapping in Belvoir, being that we're Marines, our platoon sergeant always made sure we let everyone know we're Marines. Yeah. By killing us every morning. Mm-hmm. We were the first ones out doing PT. We'd go out chow, go to training, come back from chow, do another session of PT. And then we come back and go in the sand pits and do combat, you know, yeah, stuff that we didn't even have to do. But since we were on an army base, he wanted all the freaking army dogs to know that we were Marines, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, it was good for us because it made us strive to be excellent. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was like, dude, come on, this isn't freaking boot camp. <laughs> this is like MOS. Corporal uh, Morgan was his name. He was our platoon sergeant. Corporal okay. Morgan. He was freaking crazy, crazy. <laughs> he was there for a secondary, I think. Right on a second, he was doing some sort yeah. of other training. But he was like, and he was like, he'd even have us do freaking paintball wars. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like we have mandatory paintball wars just to practice what we learned in freaking combat training. It was, <laughs> fun. Awesome. It, was, it was fun, but it was crazy. Yeah, but it was a sense of pride you had. You yeah. Know, you had that pride. And I was private. I got there um, before my wife came, and I was. Just Crap on! I was all the all the PFCs were treating me like crap. I was cleaning oh, yeah. the head, doing laundry. I was buffing the halls. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. doing all that crap. And um, I had to I had to prove myself. Mm-hmm. So my first my first course, man, I busted my butt and got honor graduate. Oh, nice! I was some private in Lance Corporal. Oh, wow! Like I had just got PFC and boom, Lance Corporal. So it's a meritorious promotion yeah, meritorious, uh, the, yeah. for honor grad. Yeah, so, yeah, very nice. And I got this. It was it was super cool. And, you know, I was very happy about that. But at the same time, my peers did not like that. Yeah. Because now I had more responsibility. I wasn't the one having to clean the heads and do yeah, all this yeah, yeah. work. And um, it was cool. It was a sense of pride. And um, in my second schooling, got I got honor graduate again. And it was just like I had to prove a point. I love the Marine Corps. I wanted to go in there and be the best I could, regardless of what task they gave me. Right. I wanted to be the best I could because I was in there. Mm-hmm. And it was important for me. Yeah. So, um, so I, honor grad out of the second school as well. Yeah. Now, was there a, another promotion out of that one? No. I, I, I don't know. They gave me a, they gave me another plaque. Okay. I have several plaques with the honor graduate from the colonel that was in charge. And I think the second one was a really nice plaque, though. It was like, yeah, really, really cool. So, uh, I had my wife with me there. And, um, it was rough because, again, you know, when you're mm-hmm. focused on building something, you think she's coming along. And I think as husbands, we just tend to forget. Yeah. Even now, you know, I'm, I've been married to my wife for 10 years, and I still get hustling, busy, working. Yeah. Doing, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, but when you're young, you're kind of like, you just don't know. You, mm-hmm. you don't see the signs. You're just busy doing your thing. Mm-hmm. So um, I got stationed to uh, Camp Pendleton. Okay. Took Took my uh, my my first wife with me, went went home, got all stuff, Camp Pendleton, and that's when like you realize in the fleet, it's um, it you just start to understand the different. You never like until I joined was in the fleet. I didn't know what a grunt was. Yeah. I didn't know what reconnaissance was. I didn't know all I knew was I'm a marine. Yeah, I yeah, made yeah. it, <laughs> and I, we were so freaking my my peers and I, who the guys I went to school with, we were so ingrained in our head that that 
just being a Marine was like, you had to do everything at the highest level. Yeah. Um, everything, no matter what. So I remember um, doing our, our job, me in a dark room, mm-hmm. and I'd be doing PT in the dark room waiting for them to develop. Just, oh, wow. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to, because yeah. we wanted to be the best at everything. And then, and then you got the competition of, you know, Pogue, Grunt. Yeah, oh, yeah, all yeah. All the, everyone, there's always something. So we had our head, okay, we're going to have to prove ourselves no matter what. And so um, anything that came up for volunteer work? Yeah. Who wants a volunteer to go to the range? Who wants a volunteer to go to security? Who wants a volunteer to go spy <laughs> reading? Who wants a volunteer? And I was like on it anytime because I was there in my MOS. I was creating SOPs. I was doing, yeah. making maps. I was seeing all the fun things these guys were doing. And I was like, why, why aren't I doing that? Yeah. And I, was, I just write about it. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even writing. I was just in chemicals, developing film and watching pictures and going, why aren't I doing that? Yeah. yeah. And um, we got to, uh, we got to Las Pogas one at the, the flight line. You know, um, you know where Margaritaville is? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the flight line right there? Yeah. So they used to do sniper training. Sniper school was there yeah. and that uh, uh, division they, schools was yeah, there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I remember we'd always watch that. And one day they had us go spy rig. They were testing. They, were, they used us as the testers for the guys that were rigging. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We just wanted to spy rig. So we're getting rigged up for spy rigging. And I got the idea that, man, I want to do this. I, I don't. I want to get out of what I'm doing, and I want to. I want to do what these guys are doing. Yeah. And I, 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 I showed interest to my my um, my unit, my master sergeant, my top. And I was like, top. I want. To. And I, I think um, when this is the sad thing, the, the good thing and the, the bad thing about my service. Yeah. And maybe it's for you too. I don't know. But I wasn't playing politics. I wasn't hanging out with staff and CEO that right. wouldn't drink. I was very strict. I was a Christian. I mm-hmm. was very disciplined. I didn't want to sin. I was yeah. I was always physically and mentally, spiritually strong. And so I didn't hang out with anyone. Mm-hmm. I was just me, go home, do my job, excel, do everything, try and do the best I could. Right. So when I showed interest in that, I think it was insulting to them. I think mm-hmm. they felt like I didn't think they were good enough. Like right. Like I thought less of what I was. And I didn't think less of what I was. I just thought I wanted more. Yeah. And so my master sergeant, my top is discouraging me. I went to my chief warrant officer and he was discouraging me. So I just went straight to reconnaissance company. Oh, no kidding. I went straight to recon company. I went, I walked in and I asked to speak to XO during my lunch break. Wow. I walked in there and I've been training. I've been running, getting up at three, four in the morning and running, you know, six, four miles a day. I was yeah. an excellent swimmer. I was working out. I was just trying my hardest. So I, I knew that's something I was going to do. I just felt in my heart. Yeah. So I walked right into the XO's office, not his office. I walked to and I asked to speak to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't let me speak to him, but they sent me to first Sergeant Todd. And he was, uh, he was first Sergeant. Of the yeah. Early content company. And I, I just said, first Sergeant, I, I really want to do this. And he, I was a corporal. Mm-hmm. And he, he says, you're, you're a corporal, man. And you're, you're old. You're gonna if you if I let you do this, you're gonna compete with guys fresh out of boot camp, fresh out of <laughs> SOI. He's like, you're too old and you're a corporal. And what's your MOS? And I told my MOS, he's like, you're not even combat arms. What am I gonna do with you? So yeah. I was like, well, let me try it. And so he says, we're doing a screening, 0300 at Las Pulas Pool on whatever day it was. I forgot. And um, I went and told my top. Yeah, that didn't go well with my command. My 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 my, my freaking staff and CEOs, they're pissed at me. Yeah, and Top says, "I'm gonna let you do it, but if you get hurt, we're not covering you." Basically, if I go out there and break my arm, I guess he was trying to say the Marine Corps wouldn't take care what? of me, which didn't make sense to me. Now that I <laughs> yeah, think about yeah, it, like, yeah. how can you say that? Like, yeah, he's trying to scare you. Yeah. So. Well, hey, to all the listeners out there, if you're struggling, you need help, anything like that. Don't forget the VA does have some great resources. You can always dial 988, press option one. You can text 838-255, or you can go to veteranscrisisline.net and click on that chat icon. Any of those are going to get you in contact with somebody that can help you out. But remember, one veteran life loss is one too many. I care about you. I know this guy cares about you. The whole veteran community cares about you. So please reach out for help. With that, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Stay motivated. Change your socks.